Rocky, we're gathered here today in the site of the headquarters. We got beautiful uh, native flowers and all kinds of stuff behind us. What are we doing today? Very, yeah, it is a very serene setting. Isn't it? <laughs> well, we're going to ban Canada geese. You know, Canada geese uh, and all waterfowl actually go through a flightless period where they molt all their wing feathers, their flight feathers, at the same time. And during that time, it uh, allows us to um, find concentrations of the birds. They like to group together when they're flightless uh, for safety reasons. What happens once you drive them into to the to the group? We've got a couple radio boats. We'll use it to herd the birds and push them towards shore, where we'll surround them. A group people will surround them and then we've got some orange construction fence that works well. We'll take that and wrap it around them and eventually close it down to a small enough point where we're able to then just physically reach over and grab the birds. And what? Yeah. It, once you have the bird in hand, what do you do? Once we have the bird in hand, uh, it'll be given to somebody who can uh, age and sex it. 96. Adult male. Hey, what do you expect to, to learn from, from a roundup? Well, when we ban birds, what we're able to do then, each band is a uniquely numbered uh, band, and we send that information to a central location, the Bird Banding Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland. If we get, recover a band from another location, we can send that information to them and find out where that bird was banded, how old it was banded, the sex of that bird at banding. And what that information tells us is, one, how the birds distribute themselves over the landscape. We can run uh, models uh, for survival to understand how the annual survival rates of, of these birds and also uh, determine harvest rates. The survival and harvest rates are the two things we use to set hunting seasons and hunting regulations to make sure that the regulations are balanced with the population. That sound of that Canada goose was a foreign sound to eastern Kentucky when I was a kid. We didn't hear that noise. What has happened over the last 40 years to uh, bring these populations uh, to Kentucky? Well, that's a good question, Tim, because uh, you know, really when you go back and look through the literature, it was thought that this group of birds, this particular type, was extinct. And they found a small flock that migrated between uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, and St. Paul, Minnesota. And what they did is take the progeny of those birds and uh, took them out and put them in er other areas on the landscape that were suitable for Canada geese. Pastures and ponds and that are deal uh, areas for the birds to come in and use, good nesting areas and good loafing areas. There's a condition actually called angel wing. Angel wing is caused by a, a diet nutrition or malnutrition actually and it's Basically, uh, the bread is the source of it. Uh, it's a high in carbohydrates. It occurs when the birds are young and fast growing. And what happens is the, the, wing, the outer wings invert and uh, they turn outward and thus rendering the bird flightless. Is this for life? Part. Is this not something they recover from? This is for life. They don't recover from it. The thing about it is that we don't see it keep going on because the, uh, the winners are hard and they can't fly out the feed like their other other geese are so they you know basically end up starving to death. Instead of coming out here and, and feeding them bread and that, actually we recommend no feeding them because they're, there's... They've got everything they, they need. They got, exactly, they have everything. They eat a lot of grass this time of year. Uh, there's uh, other uh, forbs and stuff coming up that they feed on. What do you expect 40 years from now? I expect the population will continue to uh, be stabilized and, and manage itself on, on the landscape. As long as it's the way it is right now, everything will be good for Canada geese in the future. They're a very valuable resource, uh, both aesthetically. People like to view them on, on ponds and lessers. And, mm -hmm. and uh, then it's, they're also very valuable for a hunting aspect because it provides uh, uh, just literally tens of thousands of hours of recreational opportunity. Mm -hmm. 